spirit of getting to be attracted to both men and women. I grew up struggling. Later in life, I got an sign that would trigger to have these feelings. I would have strong itching in my private parts. When I inch, that sexual urge will come over. Any man sitting next to me, I'll feel strongly attracted. I strongly attracted, no matter whether he's handsome or ugly, as long as I have that sexual, that itching, it will trigger the, the affection. And just like the professor was, it is an attack that comes, once it comes, these strong feelings are there. I've struggled with them uh, for the last 38 years. 38 years living under this kind of bondage. I've prayed, I have fasted to get rid of it because I had kept it to myself. But not until the Spirit revealed to it, I got my deliverance that day. Okay, so could, could you um, give us an example? Perhaps you're in a, a public place when suddenly this itching on your private parts comes with a very strong sexual urge. What, what would then happen at that moment? Uh, it could be either in a public meeting or a public transport. You begin itching. All the next is you need to speak and have uh, a, a, a conversation with the person next to you with the man and see if he can really be your friend and you speak talking to into a love affair. But what you're trying to say, sir, is at that moment, you cannot control yourself. The urge is so strong that you, you would approach any man, be him ugly, handsome, just to satisfy that sexual urge. You could not control yourself at that point. Yeah, at that point, of course, you're possessed. Like, the urge is so strong that you want desperately at least uh, speak to a, a man you're seeing next and that is how it happens for these years. Okay, now what, what were the, the various ways in which you found yourself give, getting entangled with these men? Uh, were you also, for example, using the internet to uh, go out and meet some of these men? Just share with us some uh, uh, ways in which you encountered them. Um, the, 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 the major way was just the physical meeting. Apart from the internet, not very much on Facebook. And probably if I met one and would give another one my phone, would kind of call to say, can I meet you because it seems you're in the same class of this affair. So people of God, I hope we understand what our brother is saying. After he was uh, sexually abused at the tender age of seven by his elder brother, that was how this strange spirit of man entered him. And he's been battling with these sexual urges for his fellow men for 38 years. Uh, and any time these urges would come, they would come in the form of a strong itch on his private part, which would be accompanied by that strong urge, and in that minute, if he's in a public place, he'd be ready to approach men at any given point to try and begin a relationship with them, which would later blossom into uh, a sexual relationship with them. So, sir, could you explain to us, in the midst of this, uh, how did this affect you in terms of your marital life? Yeah, I want to say that uh, this spirit has greatly this has affected my marital life, just like it was with the prophecy that we will stay together in marriage for 20 years, but it's been a big disappointment in a way that um, once I begin itching myself, maybe at night I go to the bathroom to bed, I can spend like 20 minutes, but the first 10 minutes I'll be scratching myself heavily. By the time I come to bed, I'll not have any affection to my wife. I'll lose out an erection that I'll not stand to have sex with her. Slightly, I doze off. A man will come in a dream, will be having sex with me. So for 20 years, you had zero affection for your wife as a result of this. Now, how are you managing this double life of being married and at the same time going after uh, men in your personal time? I want to say it is quite a challenging situation because this is something that it is within you. You cannot share it with another person. 
I mean, you live a life of torture. But this attack, once it comes, you're able to, to go out, but you try to consult yourself. It's just a life of torture. Uh, my wife never knew about it. She got to know about it about now one and a half months ago when she got to know about it. Uh, how she got to know about it, uh, she lost her phone. Then I offered to give her my old phone to put her SIM card to use it. Now when she put, she activated WhatsApp and she got to know and to read a message, a love message to one of the men I was uh, communicating with. She was mad and she's like, no, I can't continue to be together with the um, uh, a homosexual. And then that was like the, uh, the, the, prophet, the man of God prophesied that was the hardest time and that's the divorce was the next thing that was to come. So once your wife discovered this one month and a half ago, since then both of you have separated because she was so angry as a result of this hidden life that she never knew about. Yes, uh, when, when, she, when, when she discovered we separated, uh, we separated. So once again, people of God, we're hearing this confession from our brother, which we believe uh, serves as a great lesson for viewers all over the world and those present here. Now, brother, you said on your own you tried to stop. Uh, could you just give us an idea of the efforts you made to try and get out of this and how each time you would find yourself returning back to the same problem? Uh, I've tried efforts. Sometimes I would go in prayer and fasting and kind of delete any connection I would think with any other person would have this affection. But all of a sudden, when I get these attacks, I'll go back to look for these contacts to make sure we are communicating or we are talking. Okay, so, so could you just tell us uh, what now led to you coming to the Synagogue Church of All Nations where you received that prophetic word last week? What led me to come to synagogue? Uh, weeks before even my wife discovered, I tuned on Emmanuel TV. While I was watching, I watched a testimony of one person who had been delivered from that spirit. I got an interested. I even recorded it to really see that, okay, I can get deliverance if I went to synagogue. That increased my faith. Even when my wife discovered it, one thing I told her was, give me an opportunity to go scorn, and then we shall discuss other things. That was all I could say. Okay, so you told your wife that before going ahead with the final divorce, you wanted to first come to the Synagogue Church of All Nations. Yes, that's what I told her. Okay, so tell us, ever since the prophecy and deliverance last week Sunday, what are the changes you have seen in your life? Well, I should have seen a lot of changes. Of course, the attack of the itching is no more. I got delivered from the touch on Sunday. I have lived normally because what would drive me to the affection of a fellow man was it begins with the itching. I would even get a bearing sponge to make sure I am scrubbing heavily before I would do anything. But since Sunday, that is the history, that is the past. So the itching is gone, the, the affection, the attraction to your fellow males has gone. And how have you been sleeping since the deliverance, sir? You said before, even in the dreams, these men would be abusing you sexually as well. What has happened to you in that area since the deliverance? I have slept comfortably. I've not had those strange dreams. Not even, you know, I would sleep and my hand is kept here. But I'm sleeping comfortably without even knowing what is happening. Well, let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. We give all the glory to our Lord Jesus Christ for what he has done for our brother. And in the light of the experience that our brother shared, after the word of prophecy came forth last week, Prophet T.B. Joshua actually invited our brother's wife to come here to the Synagogue Church of All Nations all the way from Uganda. And by the grace of God, she is here in our midst. We'd like to invite her to come forward right now.
So once again, we heard from our brother the circumstance they were in before arriving here in the Synagogue Church of Nations. They had actually separated and had already uh, come to the point of divorce. But the husband insisted that he must come to the Synagogue Church of Nations first. And that was how God located him last week and a word of prophecy came forth. So, Madam, you are very welcome in Jesus' name. We want to thank you for honoring the invitation of Prophet T.B. Joshua to be here this morning. If you could please introduce yourself to us and tell us what can you say concerning that prophecy that your husband received last week. Uh, Emmanuel, children of God. Emmanuel. Uh, Kevin Abusima is my name. I would like before confirm, I want to confirm the prophecy, but before that I want to thank Prophet T.B. Joshua for the invitation, for sponsoring me to be here. Who am I to be sponsored in this whole world to be here today? I'm so glad. Praise Jesus. I'm very honored that I was invited. May God bless uh, Prophet T.B. Joshua for inviting me here. Uh, to confirm uh, the prophecy. Uh, on uh, one month ago, one month and a half ago, I discovered something. But I have lived with uh, Mr. Patrick for the last 20 years in this marriage, but we didn't have affection. When I married him, in the beginning, it was okay. But after two years, there was something which was very strange. We didn't have affection for each other. We used to sleep in the bed, but one, each of us at the edge of the bed, you know, these big beds. So there was no affection completely. But we have been praying and believing God that maybe one day something will happen. Me, I thought that Patrick was important. And that is all I knew. And we have been believing God. I didn't know his other side of the story. Until one month, until one month time ago, uh, like he said, I was in the town. The thieves snatched my phone in a traffic jam in Kampala. Then I didn't have another phone. I had a phone, but they were not giving out SIM cards. So he gave me his phone. When I perused through uh, WhatsApp, I found that love message with another man. Actually, I ran mad. I was so angry. So uh, what I did, I just got a phone. I called him, do you have attraction to men? He said, yes. Then I just switched off my phone. After switching off my phone, he kept on calling me. I didn't answer again. I was just annoyed. I called him that now you come, I want us to separate. Then when he was on the way coming, I told him, I don't want you to come here, I don't want to see you. Then later on, he came, I said, now what we have to do is for us to separate or we divorce. But he said, give me an opportunity. I have watched something on Emmanuel TV. Maybe I'll be delivered. I'll have total deliverance. But even when he said like that, I said, yes, okay, fine. I have forgiven you because that is who you are. But I want you to move from this bedroom, go to the guest's bedroom. <laughs> that is what I did. So he has been living in the guest's bedroom. Then I remained in the bed bedroom. And uh, I've been so angered in my life my spirit has been grieved i have had a lot of sorrow upon my heart all the spirit help me so we can we can really understand the emotions our, our sister is explaining for 20 years of marriage to suddenly discover the secret hidden life of her husband and the two were actually at a point of separation uh, before our brother came to the Synagogue Church of All Nations last week. So, Madam, last week, could you tell us on Sunday, were, were you actually watching Emmanuel TV, and, and what, what, what do you recall seeing? Now, on, uh, of course, 
Now for me, when I discovered that, I've not been talking to him. I didn't know what he was doing, whatever he wanted to do, whether he comes for deliverance or not, I was not talking to him. So now, last Sunday after church service, I switched on uh, manual TV. While I was seated in the chair watching, I saw a prophecy at that time, uh, Prophet B. Joshua prophesying that you have a spirit man that loves men and women. But of course I had seen a love message, but until I got that prophecy now, then now I confirmed that, oh, it is now true. This, <laughs> this man has been doing these things. Now after that prophecy, I kept quiet. I thanked God that God thank you for revealing this. And then of course I kept quiet. Now on Monday night at 11 p.m. when I was in bed about to sleep, I received a call. When I got a call it was a number which was a number which is new. I responded but I couldn't really understand the, the person who was calling me. I kept on saying, who are you? He said, I'm evangelist Daniel. Okay, so you mean to say that on the following day, you received that invitation from the Synagogue Church of All Nations, and that's how you are here today to honor the invitation of Prophet T.B. Joshua. Yes, that is how I'm here today. I received that invitation, and I want to thank God that I'm here and I'm believing to be delivered because myself I'm in a state of confusion. I have forgiven him, but I want uh, Prophet T.B. Joshua, uh, man of God, to have an opinion about my state that I've been in this marriage for all this time. Because right now, I'm here and I'm believing God for deliverance. Okay, so we understand the position our mother, our sister has taken here, that she has forgiven her husband and now she is here. She wants to hear the opinion of God to know the next step to take concerning the separation that she had already concluded on after this hidden life in her husband was discovered. So once again, Madam, we thank you very much for honoring the invitation of Jesus Christ to be here today. And we believe that Prophet T.B. Joshua will still come into this issue and reveal God's opinion for you to know how to move forward with your life and marriage in Jesus' name. Amen. So at this point, we just want to hear another word from our brother. Um, we would like to hear from our brother the word of advice he now has for our viewers all over the world and most especially to people who are struggling with a similar spirit that he was once struggling with. We know this is a problem that's affecting people all over the world. So sir, what is your word of advice concerning this? Um, just like I said in the beginning, that the confession I'm making is to help many people who are struggling in bondage. It is a two way. There are those who are struggling uh, with addictions, and yet behind every addiction, there's a spirit that needs to be dealt with. Then there are those who are living with these people who are in these spirits of addiction. My word of advice to both parties first to the people who are living or are discovering people who have strange behavior or character. Uh, before we rush to pass judgment over them, uh, we need to recognize what could have been the cause, what is behind this. These people need a lot of love. For example, uh, Prophet T.B. Joshua, since I came, he has shown me love from the time of the prophecy. I extended my stay in this place. I've seen deliverance because the spirit recognized the spirit in me and was dealt with. So let's not rush into judging people who are struggling in all forms of addictions, homosexuality, lesbianism, drug addict. There's something hidden that needs to be dealt with. And also, you may be there, but struggling 
in one or the other with something that you have hidden to yourself. Many years you have hidden. For example, I have stayed for 20 years with my wife, but she didn't know that I am struggling with her spirit until Prophet T.B. Joshua was able to prophesy on me and the spirit came out, I am now delivered. And finally, sir, what, what is the last word you would like to say to your wife as you are here in the presence of God? Uh, my last word I want to say to my wife is this. First of all, I ask you again to forgive me. This is, has been a struggling journey, but today as we speak, it is life in the past. The day I stepped in the arena of liberty and the prophecy came upon my life, it changed everything. I am not the past, but I am in the present. Yeah. One other thing is, it's not that he, I don't love my wife, I really love my wife. That's one thing. I want to, have, to confirm to you that he, uh, Days before I came to Scone, when she had discovered, the first people I went to, or the first place I went to cry and say, God should help me, is I went to, to meet our coordinator, Uganda, Dr. David, and that is how I was able to say, no, if you gave me a second chance to go to Scone, I know I'll get deliverance, and we can have, and we can rebuild our lives. So I'm only appealing to her and to the Spirit of God, because we have come to the arena of liberty, that whatever has happened in the past, we may not carry to the present life, and we'll move out as new people, a new couple. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. So once again, we're going to rest this case right now to hear the opinion of God from Prophet T.B. Joshua. And we are very sure that both husband and wife will return to share a wonderful testimony in Jesus' name. And people of God, we want the advice that our brother just gave to serve as a lesson to those present here and all around the world. There are many people who are under the influence of such evil spirits and it's easy for people to look at their actions on the outside and judge or condemn them. But at the end of the day, if we judge them, how will they be saved and how will they be delivered? So people of God, let this serve as a lesson to us that we as Christians, we should hate sin but love sinners. And definitely through love, that's how we can and bring about deliverance and freedom for people who are under the torments of such spirits. But if we judge them, treat them as outcasts, and disassociate ourselves from them, how will they be helped and how will they be changed? So once again, let's let this serve as a lesson to our viewers all over the world. Uh, as Prophet T.B. Joshua says, if we fail to realize there are spirits that cause us to be bowed down in bondage, we will continue to fight the wrong battle, fighting flesh and blood, fighting brother and sister fighting neighbor uh, husband and wife but if we realize that the spirit is the one behind it we will deal with it spiritually and get a lasting solution and we pray that this couple will continue to maintain the deliverance and make the word of God the standard for their lives in Jesus name Escuchamos esta impactante confirmación de profecía que este hombre recibió la semana pasada durante el servicio dominical a través del profeta T.B. Joshua. El profeta le dijo que él tenía un hombre dentro de él y que eso le hacía tener afectos sexuales tanto por mujeres como por hombres y que su esposa estaba decepcionada. Él confirma esa profecía a ser 100% verdad porque cuenta que a la edad de los 7 años él fue abusado sexualmente sexualmente por su hermano mayor y desde ese momento un espíritu de hombre entró en él y le hizo sentir atracción sexual hacia hombres él dice que empezó a crecer con este afecto por hombres hasta el punto que él aunque estuviera en un lugar público de repente podía sentir una fuerte picazón en su parte privada e inmediatamente esa picazón despertaba un deseo sexual por hombres y hacía que él 
hablara y se contactara con cualquier hombre que se encontrara en el camino y tener relaciones sexuales con él. Él dice que esto le pasaba concurrentemente después de sentir esta fuerte picazón en su cuerpo. Dice que creyendo que podía salir de esta situación contrajo matrimonio. Lamentablemente después de dos años de matrimonio el afecto por su esposa desapareció y empezó a vivir esta doble vida por más de 20 años. Mientras seguía casado con su esposa, seguía teniendo esos encuentros fortuitos con hombres. Dice que él no podía dejar esta situación y que además eh, en los sueños él solía ver un hombre que venía y tenía relaciones sexuales con él. Y ese asunto de la picazón en su cuerpo también afectó su relación con su esposa porque él lo podía sentir en su casa, iba a... a a resolver en el baño y esta picazón lo llevaba a la masturbación y eso hacía que no tuviera ningún deseo sexual por su esposa, eso realmente destruyó su matrimonio pues recientemente eh, por accidente su esposa descubrió un mensaje de texto que él tenía con un hombre con el cual estaba llevando una relación sentimental y esto hizo que su esposa realmente se impactara, se enojara y liderara a, a a este matrimonio hacia el divorcio. Ellos ya llevan un tiempo tempo, eh, separados, divorciados, e inmediatamente ellos se separaron. Él decidió venir a la sinagoga iglesia de todas las naciones porque después de muchos intentos de dejar este deseo por los hombres, se dio cuenta que tenía que buscar el rostro de Dios. Al venir aquí, el profeta le dio esa palabra profética y al mismo tiempo lo liberó de este espíritu de hombre y está aquí para testificar que ese deseo por hombres ha desaparecido que ya no siente esa picazón en su parte privada y que ya no ve ese hombre que solía venir a tener relaciones sexuales con él en los sueños. Confirma que está 100% liberado y que además junto a su esposa quieren escuchar la opinión de Dios acerca de su matrimonio. Así que van a esperar a través del profeta T.B. Joshua qué tiene Dios para decir acerca de su situación. Le damos toda la gloria y la honra a Jesucristo por esta palabra profética. Nous venons tout juste d'entendre le merveilleux témoignage de cet homme, euh, confirmation de prophétie. Donc la semaine dernière, l'homme de Dieu lui a dit tu es une attirance sexuelle pour les hommes et les femmes. Il confirme et dit que c'est vrai qu'il a l'esprit de l'homme qui l'a poussé à avoir de l'affection pour les hommes. Il dit qu'à l'âge de 7 ans, il fut abusé sexuellement par son frère aîné. Depuis ce jour, il reçoit beaucoup d'attaques dans ses rêves. Il dit convoiter les hommes et pouvoir euh, ne point se contrôler. Il dit qu'il a souffert de ces attaques et des impulsions incontrôlables pour les hommes pendant 38 ans. Il dit qu'il avait toujours des démangeaisons dans ses parties privées, le poussant à faire des choses qu'il ne faut pas, il utilisait les réseaux sociaux afin de rencontrer plusieurs hommes cet esprit d'homme affecta son mariage, il dit qu'il n'avait plus d'affection pour sa femme et ni la satisfaire il dit que toutes les nuits il avait des rencontres avec des hommes et cela le satisfaisait, il dit que sa femme a découvert son secret en utilisant son téléphone qui a mené à la séparation du couple, il dit qu'il a tout essayé pour mettre fin à cette attirance pour les hommes il fut touché en beau jour et encouragé par un témoignage sur Emmanuel TV d'un homme qui a été délivré de l'esprit de l'homme il dit que voilà avant d'entamer le divorce il a décidé de venir à la synagogue de toutes les nations cherchant la face de Dieu et sa délivrance. L'homme de Dieu, le prophète Tibi Joshua, prie pour lui au nom de Jésus-Christ. Depuis ce jour, il ne souffre plus des démangeaisons, ni l'envie et des pulsions pour les hommes. Il dit que voilà, aujourd'hui sa vie a changé, il n'a plus des attaques euh, bizarres dans, le, dans les nuits, il dort libre. Il dit que grand gloire à Dieu de l'avoir délivré de cet esprit de l'homme. Et comme vous voyez aujourd'hui, le prophète Tibi Joshua a invité son épouse à la synagogue pour la réconciliation, car Dieu est un Dieu qui restaure, qui réconcilie. Il dit que voilà, il confirme la prophétie du prophète Tibi Joshua. Il dit que voilà, maintenant son épouse, elle, elle fait confiance à Dieu, elle rend gloire à Dieu d'avoir délivré son époux, elle attend de Dieu, elle attend pour que Dieu lui dise quoi faire après. Téléspectateurs, rendons gloire à Dieu pour ce merveilleux témoignage et de comment Dieu a réconcilié et restauré cette famille. Dans le nom de Jésus-Christ, rendons gloire à Dieu. Shall we put our hands together for Jesus Christ? There's a, a couple at the back of this row, just towards the end of this row. And there's a fight, and uh, this fight has been taken to the law court. So please come out. You have to leave the marriage. You put on suit, and uh, 
under it like a blue light blue. Please come. Put on tie. The issue of your marriage is not basically of what happened to this marriage. It's disappointment. No, this is not your first marriage. Yes, Prophet. Basically, this is your third attempt. Yes, Prophet. You know, between this woman and this one, the one in the middle is a white lady. A exactly. White lady. Exactly, Prophet. Your problem has been like that. They want you to leave this woman again and go from one woman to another. Just to destroy your life. This is what you are facing now. So the attempt to leave this marriage, this is what Satan is attempt. So Madam, please to me. Deliver. So whatever is happening now, please, is the work of Satan. Yes, Pastor. Okay? Yes, sir. You beat this woman, you embarrass this woman, you abuse this woman. Yes, Pastor, that's true, sir. You're shy from the white lady yes, that's sir. coming to the house, is coming to cause confusion. Yes, Yes, Pastor, that's very true. Please, you can't leave this marriage, okay? Yes, you just sir. have to tell you the reason why you should not leave. Yes, okay, Pastor. Okay, please, you that's have to So, I'm so going to wait for me. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. So, right now, the couple in concern with the whole family are coming forward. God Almighty has taken control of the situation and right now they are coming to give and share their confirmation and testimony of the deliverance the whole family has received. by telling us your name and who are the people standing next to you. Church Emmanuel. Emmanuel. God is truly with us. My name is David Okeke. Thank you. My name is David Osita Okeke. Yes. yes. I am a Nigerian my name is David Osita Okeke. I am a German citizen of Nigerian origin. The woman next to me is my dear wife, Mrs. Ijama Okeke. And here is our pastor of Aiken Church, Stuttgart, Mr. Joseph Ojotabu. Here is Osita David, my son. Here is my mother-in-law, Mrs. Okeke. Here's my daughter, Chimamanda Angel Okeke. My brothers in laws, it's my daughter, Amazing Chiamaka Okeke. And my little son, Chinonso. Let me is He's out now. Okeke. We, we are all from Germany. Thank you very much, sir. Now, can you tell us the prophetic message you received in the course of the service during the mass prayer last week? 
Last Sunday, during the mass prayer towards the end, Senior Prophet T.B. Joshua uh, prophesied that says there's a couple at the end, at the back, that, who, that there was a fight, and this particular fight has been taken to the law court. And he described exactly what I was wearing, and the moment I heard the prophecy, I knew that it was no one else but me and my family, so I ran out together with my wife. So when we came out, the man of God, Senior Prophet T.B. Joshua said that the issue with, the issue with, that we are having right now is actually that this, the devil wants to destroy our marriage. The prophecy was that there was a fight and in this fight is actually now in the court which is a hundred percent correct because um i have like he said that bef my wife is the third attempt of me of my ma in my marriage life which is exactly correct before i left africa i i went for a lady but at the end of the day i didn't i didn't marry her while in Germany, I got married to a German woman. The marriage lasted eight years. And in, out of that marriage, I had a son. Just like the prophet prophesied, my son used to come to our house every two weeks. And every time he's around, there is always trouble. There is always a confusion in the house. And um, this led to a lot of troubles between me and my wife, and most of the times she, she called the police so often that um, the police now, they know, they know our case and, and the city very clearly. And, um, sorry? Yes, uh, she, used, she complains to the police also that I used to beat her. And um, this was one of the reasons for which she fight for separation and divorce process, which is going on right now in the court as we speak. So you mean the man of God prophesied correctly that this issue was a, a, a matter of law, that it had gone to the court of law? It's absolutely 100% correct. So now tell us, give us instances of issues that happened. First of all, what was the issue you were having with your ex-German wife concerning name change and all that? Can you give an explanation? Yes. Um, yes, it's one of the problems that was causing uh, friction in my marriage with my wife was the fact that when I got married to the German woman, lady, uh, out of love, and because then the relationship was very good, I even came to Africa three times with her. Out of love, I took the, na the name of the family when we got married. So no, after the... You mean you took her family name as uh, your own name? Yes. Uh -huh. So uh, when the marriage was now divorced eight years later, because of the law in Germany, it wasn't so easy for me to change the name. And when I got married now with my wife, um, she didn't like that at all. And it has been a source of trouble in our marriage because she has been um, insisting that I change the name. So, yes, she has been insisting that I change the name. And this is also um, one of the uh, pivotal problems that we have been having in our marriage. Some other issues has to do with the fact that she, she, she's afraid. Out of, because of the problem we are having because of my son from the earlier marriage, um, there was a lack, lack of trust in the marriage. She was no more trusting me and I, and, uh, and I was not also trusting her because she is uh, saying that I don't have, that I give so much affection to this, to my son from the earlier marriage, and I'm not 
so much caring about about our children, uh, the, the siblings. Okay, because of time. So she saw that uh, the issue, just as the man of God prophesied, that the child was the cause of the confusion in the home. So this was causing disaffection because your wife felt you were giving much affection to the child while neglecting your other children. Exactly. That is also the reason why almost all the times that we have problems, it's always the days, most of the days are the days my son um, from the earlier marriage is, is in that house. Okay, now, did this cause domestic violence, and what did it lead to at the end of the day? Yeah, it, has, it, it, it really caused a lot of uh, domestic uh, violence and uh, trouble in the house, and it led to, exactly as the man of God prophesied, and it led to, at the end to the reasons why my wife fought for separation and, and uh, divorce of the marriage. So because of this domestic violence where you find yourself hitting your wife, both of you arguing and fighting, and then did you call the security of the country in to intervene? Um, I have not done that myself, but my wife did in several occasions. The police were frequenting our house so many times. And um, it's, it's, I cannot describe, it's a lot of, just like the man of God prophesied, there was total confusion in our marriage in our home because of, because of this particular problem. Okay, so now, how did you now get to come down here? And what attempts did you both go through to try to solve this problem on your own, without solution, before you came here? Yes, when, I, when, when my, my wife left and I received uh, the letters from the court, I knew, yes, because I was, I was uh, directed by the court to leave the house, I knew that um, just like the man of God prophesied that this is the work of Satan to destroy my life, I knew if I had to go the way of the court or the state laws, my family is going to be destroyed because there was a lot of confusions and a lot of complications and allegations made against me. So being my family being ardent followers of senior prophet tb joshua we watch Emmanuel tv yes and um we have been in contact with our pastor uh pastor joseph Ojetabu, uh, who has been counseling and advising us on how to go about finding a lasting solution and reconciliation of the marriage and as the problems uh was getting worse because i saw uh, uh, the state could not give us any lasting solution and um, after discussing with him we, he advised me that the best place and the only place that we can find a lasting solution to our problem is the synagogue church of all nations thank you very much so let us put our hands together for Jesus Christ And now, it means, it, was it that at that time when you both decided to come here, you were already separated? Yes. For we, how long? We, since, since 13th of December 2017, we've been separated. You mean since last year, you yeah, were already last, separated? Yes. And because uh, the pastor here sought God's wisdom, that was why he called you both from your various houses, yes. and uh, both of you agreed to come down here. Yes. At times, we spoke till two o'clock in the night I thank the Lord for his uh, efforts and what he has done and for enabling us to to come to synagogue church of all nations and standing here today let us put our hands together for Jesus Christ now quickly bef before we listen to your wife tell us what now happened after the man of God gave you this prophetic message and both you and your wife came out what happened after that Emmanuel God is indeed with us. I bless the name of the Lord for the grace that is senior prophet T.B. Joshua located us last Sunday and prayed for me and my wife. Since that day, a lot of changes has taken place. Tremendous changes that I cannot be able to, uh, because of time, go into right now. Um, I, am, I know now that I'm going home with my family intact, with my marriage restored, 
with the problems that we have reconciled. Because since that very day, after the prayer of man of God, my eyes, my senses, both spiritual and physical, have been opened to see that my wife is not only the mother of my children, but also that of my son, Leon. And she has also, on her part, um, told me that once we are back, things will never be like it has been till now. And on my own part, and on my own part, I've, I've come to understand and realize the mistakes that I've made. For example, what has to do with the name, the, the, the name, the German name of my ex-wife that I've been bearing to this very time that has been causing problem in our marriage. And I've made the decision that the first thing I'm going to do once we return back to Germany is to completely change the name. Let us put our hands together for Jesus Christ. I'm using this opportunity before uh, the whole world to ask for forgiveness from my wife uh, in any form, in any art that I have, um, through my actions or words, uh, wronged her, and which has led to this particular problem that we're having right now. I want to ask her for forgiveness. Please forgive me. Indeed, the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ is all about reconciliation. We thank God for what the Lord has done through the prophetic message you received from our Father in the Lord, Prophet T.B. Joshua, that God Almighty, after that prophecy and deliverance, your eyes have been opened to see the wrong things you are doing. And now you can see that your wife is not only the mother of your four children, but also the mother of the other boy. So we thank God. Let us quickly listen to your wife. And the, we know that re, recalling the past or remembering the past, the only reason we have to do that is to glorify God for what he has done. So this is why our sister is here to also share her experience and bless God for that deliverance she also received. So start by telling us your name and quickly introduce the people who are standing next to you. People of God, Emmanuel. Good morning, church. My name is Mrs. Ijoma Okeke. And the gentleman beside me is my husband, Mr. David Okeke. And here is our pastor, our residential pastor, Pastor Joe, pastor from Ekan Church, Stuttgart, Germany. Here is my mother in law, Mrs. Cecilia Okeke, my lovely mother. My mother, not my mother, my mother. And my son, Osita Okeke, my daughter Chimamanda, Chiamaka, my brother, and my our family friend. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you very much, madam. So now, can you tell us your own side of the prophecy you received? Because we saw in the clip that you came out immediately and you joined your husband to confirm that prophecy of the man of God. Tell us what the prophecy and how this related or is related to your situation. Praise the Lord. Uh, before, I want to, before I start, I want to first of all thank the senior prophet, T.B. Joshua, for his grace by locating us and prophesying to us last week Sunday and also for making it possible for us to be from last week Sunday up to today the grace is so much and I am so grateful for this wonderful encounter praise the Lord hallelujah I met my husband eight years ago in Germany I traveled Okay. The prophecy, man of God said, I confirm it to be truth. He mentioned that there's a couple sitting over there. Um, he mentioned what my husband was wearing. He said he was wearing a gray suit with a t-shirt and navy blue. 
and that is true. And he said that we're having a fight at home and it's the cause of devil. And this fight has gotten to the court and my husband was asked to leave the house. That is 100% true because as we are standing now, we're standing separated and are waiting for divorce case to start up by November. And also the second prophecy he said was that the child from the earlier marriage always causes problem when we when he comes to visit. I also confirmed them confirm that to be true. Because whenever the boy not only when he visits, just as the mention of the boy's name in my marriage causes problem. Praise the Lord. And like I said, I met my husband eight years ago in Germany. Then he was married and was divorced. And out of that marriage came up um, a son. And since I came into his life, he, I noticed that he was answering the name of the ex-wife. And we are evils from Nigeria. That is not normal. I asked him to change it. He refused for some reasons that he gave, he gave to me. I kept quiet. But I found out that the name was bringing so much problem in the family. At a point, I brought up the name issue again. He said no. He divorced his wife, but he has not divorced his son. That if he changed the name, that means he's divorcing the son. <laughs> and then I said, okay. When I started having children, I said my children will not answer his name. Because that is the name from an ex-wife. The children started answering my own name. At a point, I now made it clear to him, because it was bringing so much problem in my family that he has to change the name. If he wants to be married with me, continue being married to me, he has to finish up whatever that is tied him to the first uh, marriage, because it was causing big problems in my marriage. And the second prophecy that the man of God gave was that whenever the son comes to visit us, there's always a problem. I confirmed them to be true because my husband made it clear to me that this is my son and these are your children. Whenever my, my, my son comes, he told me that I come from Nigeria. He has been in Germany for 20 years. He's a German citizen that I should keep my village character to myself and train my own children and leave the boy. So whenever the boy comes into my home, my home becomes a German family where everything will be perfect. At a point, my husband will not allow me to cook for the boy. He cooks, he does everything. As soon as the boy goes, my home becomes a Nigerian home again. I take care of my, my children. Praise the Lord. And whenever the boy comes to... Uh, I was, it was going on like this until I noticed that my children are growing up and they are, begun, they are becoming to see the preferential and the two families in one. To the extent that the children are complaining to, for example, they will ask me, why is daddy giving Leon water and juice and he's giving me water? Such things were showing up and I knew I have to do something as a woman of the house. When, when our son comes home, I'm afraid to correct the boy because once I correct him, it's a fight. The father shows up and this ends up so many times beating me up in front of the children, in front of the boy, and so much uh, harassment. At a point, I knew as a mother, I have to do something. And that led me to, when the beating became so serious, I have to run away from the house with, with the four children. I have to run to women and children protection section. Before then, church, I must remind you that we were separated in 2016 for like two months because the police comes in when they are disputing i call the police they will come they will ask him to go away sometimes two weeks sometimes one month he will beg me he will call the whole ch the pastors we beg me his mother many people will beg me give him another chance and i will do that and we got the pastor got to know of us 2014 and he has been canceling us he has been trying to make this marriage work. So you mean that when the pastor knew your family, he met you people in this situation? Yes, when the pastor met us, he prophesied to me, you are not happy in your marriage. That was how he met us in 2014. And since then, he has, he has been, been making efforts all to no avail. He has been making efforts all to no avail. In 2016, 
my husband had to lay his hand on the Bible and swore that he will never hit me, he will never, but it didn't last for five months. And uh, we are back to where we are. So at a point, I, I saw myself dying. Depression came in, sickness came in. I was losing strength. I couldn't take care of my four children. I was losing strength. And I knew that I have to be alive and take care of uh, these children. It got to a point that, that, that my husband started telling the authorities that I'm sick and I cannot take the shoe, take away my children. And people of God, we know we're from Germany. And um, children that are German citizens belong to the government. It got to, it got to a point that the social service became worried of these children. And they were ready to take these children out of the, uh, the family because it was violent. The police were coming in and out of the, of the house, and it's not good for the children. And as a mother, I knew, I asked myself, is it marriage or children? And by the grace of God, I knew that these children, they are worth being taken care of by, by their parents that are giving them to adopted um, families and that is when I have to run to women and, and children protection service and then from there I fought for divorce and he was asked to move out of the house like I said we are separated for six months now we're just waiting because in German in Germany the law is that we have to be separated for one year before divorce so we're waiting for the divorce process to start by November but I thank God and I told my husband because I drank up to three times where Prophet, you know, Prophet T.B. Joshua was praying for me. And I told my husband, I will not end this marriage until I hear what the man of God has to say. Let us put our hands together for Jesus Christ. So you have said it all, madam. Without much ado, tell us what now happened when you arrived here. Emmanuel. When my husband asked me to come here, because there was no, I didn't trust him again. I said, no, I'm not coming. I was afraid because of fear of what will happen. Then the pastor now came in and said, you have already gave us a mandate that you, I must hear from Prophet T.B. Joshua. I, then I have to be there alive. I said, pastor, no, I'm not going to Nigeria. Look at what is happening in Germany where there is a court of law. What of in Nigeria? What will happen? I'm not going there. And, and now pastor have to promise and say, I will abandon my church and follow you. And it's just because the pastor is here. That is why I'm here. Praise Let God. us put our hands together for Jesus Christ. I say that before... I accepted to come here. Pastor said, I am going to abandon my church and follow you. I will be with you. Do not be afraid. We are going to hear from the prophet T.B. Joshua what he has, what is, what is outcome of this marriage. And the, the third prophecy man of God gave to me just calmed my mind. He said, do not leave this marriage. I am going to tell you why you have to stay. Praise the Lord. And since we have arrived here, I was full of fear, like I said, depression, angry. But as we stayed here, we started listening to, we went to Bible studies. The first day, we would listen to overcoming your fear, and the whole fear came down. By, uh, we were told how to do that, by renewing your mind, by believing, by confessing, and by acting on what you have already confessed. And the third day, we also listened to how you work on faith that faith is effortless praise the lord so all this counseling you've been yeah. receiving has renewed your it mind renewed my mind and we were so opportune to be in the prayer mountain praise the lord and we see the grace of god at work there and you also received deliverance from our father in the lord prophet tb joshua my life has been I've been sleeping peacefully it has been a there has been a change in my life and a change in my decision Praise the Lord. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. So now that change in your decision is what we want to hear. The change in my decision is the grace 
at work in synagogue church of ne our nation has gotten to me has gotten to my marriage and once we get back to germany i will do the ne the necessary thing lawfully to withdraw the divorce case praise the lord let's put our hands together